Well, good, <clears throat> good morning and uh, welcome everyone to our online church services at Warrington Christian Church. I want to just welcome everybody who are regular attenders and I also want to welcome anybody out there who may be uh, from a different town or, you know, a different state. We're just glad to have you here. I know at this moment in history, we have found ourselves in some pretty crazy times. Uh, this COVID-19 virus has pretty much disrupted our whole society. Uh, I know you've heard the news, but I mean, schools have been canceled. Uh, it's hard to believe the NCAA, you know, and all kinds of other sports have been canceled. Uh, we've got places you can only, you can't even go to dine in uh, and eat a meal anymore. And uh, think about the stock market. <laughs> it's been going all over the place. <clears throat> the list could go on and on, but uh, from a physical standpoint, I don't think there's anything wrong with us doing church online. In fact, I think it's probably wise for us to do it at this time uh, because uh, we don't want anybody to, uh, to get sick. And so we're doing this for the next two Sundays, and then we're going to reevaluate as we get some, some new information but on a spiritual level, I just want us to know that, that God is still in control, okay? Uh, God is still good. Uh, he is not going to leave us. He's not going to forsake us. And so today, hey, on March 22nd, 2020, uh, we are going to worship the Lord. Now, just for some information here, today I am going to continue in the series that we've been on. We've been talking about life on mission, and uh, we're just going to continue that for today, but uh, we're going to end that series today. And next week, I am going to present a special message that really deals with the circumstances we found ourselves in. And I'm just, I've entitled it, uh, Winds and Waves of Fear. And so I hope that you will tune in next week because I think it's a message that could really encourage you today. Well, hey, why don't you uh, just bow your heads out there with me, and we're going to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, I, I know that this whole idea of, uh, you know, doing church online uh, can be new for a whole lot of us, and so it can seem a little bit odd, but God, I do pray that you can make us feel comfortable really quick. And I know that we're in separate houses, but uh, we just want to join you in worship today. We do pray for everybody's safety out there. We pray for everybody's health uh, in this nation and nations beyond. Uh, we pray for uh, the safety and health of all of our uh, health professionals out there. And we're just asking that you would guide those who are in positions of authority, who are our leaders, and that you would help them to make decisions. Give them your guidance, give them your wisdom as they just deal with each issue as it, as it comes along. And God, right now, I, I pray that you would just direct our hearts as we begin our worship today. In Jesus' name we do pray, amen.
place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Amen. Hey. 
this time, we uh, just wanted to prepare uh, your hearts to partake of communion today. I know that we'd sent out an email and just asked everybody, you know, that you can have your own juice, you can have your own crackers, and just partake of communion in your home setting. I just wanted to remind us about the very simple reason that we get together to remember at this time. I wanted to read from 1 Corinthians, it's chapter 11, and I start in verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. It really is just a time in where we just remember what God has done for us by sending his son. And I just want us to reflect on the wonderful gift of Jesus to our lives. I'm going to pray and that you can take just a moment to reflect and partake of communion. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so incredibly grateful for all you have given us, not just in this life, but Father, from a spiritual perspective, we're grateful for the gift of Jesus. And it's my prayer that we would remember this gift today as we partake of communion. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. this time, I just wanted to bring your attention to, uh, to uh, giving. And uh, since we're not in church today, I think it's pretty obvious that giving is going to have to be done online. And you can do that at our, our website. It's warrantonchristian.org. And uh, for anybody that may not be from our church and would just like to give, it's Warrenton, as in W-A-R-R-E-N-T-O-N, Christian. Dot org, and we would greatly appreciate your gift to the Lord and, and to this congregation for the work and the ministry that we do here. Um, <clears throat> for all of uh, others may just want to, uh, you know, send in a physical gift and you can mail it in. If you need the church's address, just go to our website again and you can find the church address there and you can, you can mail in your check uh, this week, Okay. Thank you so much for all the gifts that you give, and, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of jump right in the message for today. Uh, we have been in a series here at our congregation called Life on Mission, and this is all about life really on mission beyond the walls of the church. And I'm going to focus on this today, but I wanted you to know, that, again, next week I'm going to be preaching a special message uh, about our current circumstances that we find ourselves in. So I'd love for you to tune back in uh, next week. I think you'll be encouraged by it. You know, John Ortberg, he is a uh, Christian author, and he's a, a well-known minister who is from Menlo, California. And he tells how one night, years back, uh, his wife, Nancy, okay, brought home a movie called Cliffhanger. 
starring Sylvester Stallone, okay? Now, this movie is from like back in 1993, but John Ortberg describes it like this, okay? He said it takes place in the mountains. People are climbing mountains in real cold weather. They're all wearing parkas and heavy jackets, jackets except for Sylvester Stallone, who can't keep his shirt on. <laughs> all through his, this movie, I mean, five or six times, he says his shirt is off. He's dangling from a rope. He has huge biceps and triceps that are bulging and rippling right off the screen. He says, now my wife who got this video is looking at him and then she's looking at me and she's looking at him and then looking at me and looking at him and, and, and looking at me. And, and, and he says that she told him, you know, I've never been attracted to well-built men. <laughs> now, John, he said, and I searched for the compliment that I knew was lurking down beneath the surface, but I could never find it. <laughs> I think we all understand, okay, how Sylvester Stallone didn't just wake up one day and have all those muscles. Uh, he was well-trained, and he might even have been a little well injected. I don't know. <laughs> it's just a fact that growth, okay, and transformation requires training. For example, as much as I'd really like to wake up tomorrow and be 10 pounds lighter, that is not going to happen unless I begin to train. And that's also true in the spiritual realm. If we intend to grow spiritually, it is going to require that we engage ourselves in a spiritual training routine. Now, with all of that in mind, here's one thing I really want us to remember today as we just continue in this series about life on mission. Here it is. When we grow to be like Jesus, we can help others grow to be like Jesus. I mean, growing, okay, it is so important as we do our life on mission. And here's why, okay? It is rather difficult to point people in the right direction when you're not headed in the right direction yourself. In Matthew 28, 19 and 20, Jesus made this statement. He said, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them. That's what I want us to really get today. And teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. As we grow spiritually, we are to really come alongside someone else and teach them to grow. That's all a part of our life on mission to really make disciples. Now, there are three questions that I want to focus on today, and each of these will help us to consider our own life personally, and it will help us to consider how we can help someone else to grow. First, first, the first question is this, why is growing and training to be like Jesus so important? Well, let me answer that. For one, growth is expected of someone who follows Jesus. Now, the Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2, it says, Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. It says, like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk. And that spiritual milk is a reference to the Word of God. And it says, so that by it, you may grow up in your salvation. Now, when you go back to the original language of the Bible, the Greek language, that word crave, okay, it can also be translated desire greatly. It can even be translated uh, to lustfully long after. And it's written in a tense form in that language that we would begin craving the Word of God, this spiritual milk in the Word of God, like right now, okay, at this very moment. And by doing so, we are going to grow up in our salvation to get rid of all that malice and deceit and so forth from our lives. But I, what I want us to notice is we are to crave the word. We are to desire the word. We are to lustfully long after the word. 
And it's that kind of, of a mindset, that kind of discipline and effort that we're going to have to have in order to grow spiritually. Here, here's another reason, and that is growth is the only way you're going to bear good fruit. Jesus also said in John 15, okay, verses 4 to 8, he said, remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself, but it must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Now listen to this. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, he said, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it'll be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. You see, growth and bearing fruit is only going to happen when you're connected to Jesus, all right? The vine. And apart from a connection to Jesus, you never will be able to bear the kind of fruit, or we might say the kind of lifestyle that he really wants for your life. And if you are cutting yourself off from Jesus, the only spiritual source that can help you to grow, okay, then spiritually you're going to wither up and you're just going to die. And here's the thing to keep in mind from verse 8, because Jesus said, this is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples, you see, the world needs to really see what a disciple, what a follower of Jesus looks like. And it makes me think about another passage, perhaps even more well-known, in Matthew 5, 14 to 16, when Jesus, he, he said, he said, now you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may be able to see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Listen, when we let the light of God's values and standards shine forth through our life, we literally become a witness to the transforming power of God to this world. And that's a good thing because we're going to be able to actually light the way for others to see God through us and lead people to give glory to God. And as I said earlier, you know, it's kind of difficult to point people in the right direction for their life if you're not headed in the right direction for your life. And then another reason is that growth is necessary in order to make disciples and teach them. I read from this passage earlier, it's all about our life on mission from, from Jesus. And he said, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. You see, not only are we to make disciples, but the scripture there says that we are to teach them everything Jesus commanded. So when someone makes a decision to follow Jesus and in essence they walk out of the, you know, they step out of the baptistry, the mission is not over. The mission has really only just begun. And we are to grow ourselves and we are to grow others. You see, in that text, and I think it's very important, our mission is to make disciples, okay, baptize them and teach them. And like I said back at the beginning of this message, when we grow to be like Jesus, we can help others grow to be like Jesus. Let me illus illustrate it this way, okay? I think that my, my mother-in-law can make some of the best green beans in the world, okay? I mean, they are good. Mm -mm -mm. And you see, she knew how to cook them, but I didn't. 
Now, all of that changed on the day that she taught me how to cook her green beans. And here's what you do. First, you take bacon. Take them long strips. Boy, they're just kind of hanging down. And get some scissors. And man, start cutting little pieces. And they're going to drop down into the pan. And then once they're down there, you've got to start frying it up. And you fry them up really crisp, okay? Not just a little bit, but really crisp. And all the grease from that bacon is going to run out in that pan. <laughs> and then you have onions that are already cut all up, and then you put them in with the bacon, and it all caramelizes, you know? The onions caramelize. Then you add the green beans, and then you put in a little salt and a little pepper, and, and you cook it for around 45 minutes, and it'll be some of the best green beans you've ever had in your life. Now, here's my point, okay? My mother-in-law already had the knowledge, she had already grown in her knowledge of how to cook green beans. And I became her green bean disciple, <laughs> her green bean follower. And uh, I learned how to do it for myself, okay? Her growth actually led to my growth. And that's called making disciples and teaching them. And that's exactly how we need to be doing it as a more mature follower of Jesus. Tim Harlow, he said, our mission is to take others with us on mission so they can take others on mission to take others on mission. And he said, the great thing about this is that you will never grow more in your faith than when you are leading someone else in faith. He said, you will never learn more than when you teach. So here's the next question that I want us to think about this morning. And that is, well, okay, if I'm supposed to be growing, what's the best way for me to grow in my faith so I can help someone else grow in their faith? The news recently uh, had a story about Callie Wilkes, okay? Callie Wilkes, she had been faithfully, I mean faithfully taking care of a succulent plant, plant, a succulent plant that she had had for two years. In her own words, she said this, it was full, beautiful coloring, and just an all-over perfect plant. She said, I had a watering plan for it. <laughs> if someone else tried to water my succulent plant, I would get so defensive because I just wanted to keep good care of it. She also wrote this, though. Today, I decided it was time to transplant. I found the cutest vase that suited it perfectly. She said, I go to pull it from the original plastic container it was purchased with to learn this plant was fake. <laughs> She learned, she learned it because when she pulled it out, there was styrofoam underneath with sand and glue, uh, uh, or with sand that was actually glued to the top. She said, I feel like these last two years of my life have been a lie. <laughs> it all came to a shock as to her uh, having dedicated, you see, so much of her time to take care of a plant that she was very proud of. Now, one thing you have to admire about this lady is her commitment to water this plant and take care of it. I mean, she even had a watering plan, okay? And when it comes down to our personal spiritual growth, I think we need a plan as well. So what's the best plan to grow spiritually so you can help someone else to grow in their faith as well. Now, we could say a whole lot about this, okay? But there are two things that I want to narrow this down to that I think are very, very important to your spiritual growth and my spiritual growth. And one of them is this, okay? Find your people. Find your people, okay? Now, your people means that you need to find fellow believers that you can spend time with, okay? That you can talk to that you can grow together in your faith. The Bible says in Hebrews 10, 24 to 25, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. You know, God never intended any of us to live the Christian life alone. 
which is one reason that, that he established the church. When you get together with God's people, man, it is a time where you can actually encourage one another. You can help comfort one another. You can pray for each other. You can challenge each other even from the Bible. There's no doubt in my mind when you find your people and you connect with them in a relationship, you are going to grow spiritually. And that's why I think that small groups can be so important. And we just really need each other as we journey through life and as we face unique challenges, even like the unique challenge that we found ourselves in today. And then secondly, not only find your people, but hey, find your Bible. <laughs> the Bible really becomes like the voice of God to us, and, and it guides us to become more like Jesus. I like the description in God's Word about the Bible. Hebrews 4, 12 to 14, excuse me, 12 to 13, says, For the Word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword, it penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. You know, even though the word of God was written a couple thousand years ago, man, it still packs a spiritual punch as though it were alive, as though it were speaking to us in person. I mean, how can that be? <laughs> well, when you consider that God is the author of the Bible and that the Holy Spirit has the ability to convict us of sin, righteousness, and the judgment to come, they can literally make the Word of God alive and active and the Word of God can literally change your life. Folks, the Bible is indispensable when it comes to spiritual growth. Charles Spurgeon once said, nobody ever outgrows Scripture. The book widens okay, and deepens with our years. So here's the bottom line. When you find your people and you find your Bible, and that they are working together in tandem, it will result in your spiritual growth. So here's my big challenge for the day as we think about our life on mission and this whole concept of grow, and that is who will you choose to teach and mentor? In Matthew 28, we've already read that passage. In 19 and 20, Jesus has called us as disciples, okay, to make disciples, to baptize them, and to teach them. It's all a part of our life mission. I mean, you need mature believers in your life, and I need mature believers in my life. And helping someone along in their faith, it doesn't need to be intimidating, it's not something that should just be assigned to a select, you know, few spiritual giants in the church. I mean, if that's how it works, then we are going to completely fail at our life on mission task. From an overall perspective, okay, when we think about the Bible, here's what it means to be a disciple, a follower of Jesus. It means that you are pursuing a relationship with Jesus, okay? It means that you are striving to live out your faith in practical ways. It means that we are going to bear good fruit, that we are going to be engaged in the Word of God, that we are going to demonstrate love for others. But it also means, as we learn in this text, that it that we are to teach new believers and help them to develop a strong spiritual root system. Now, you might be thinking, okay, well, man, I, I, I can't teach, I can't mentor, man, I don't think I'll be able to do that. Well, okay, I, I kind of get that. But you know, even if that's been your practice for years as a follower of Jesus, you can change that today. 
Now, here's what I mean by teaching and training and, and mentoring. And, and I think we've probably, you know, made this way too harder than it is. But it can be just like, you know, hey, find a, find a fellow believer and, and uh, you know, go out for coffee together. Maybe it's once a week, you know, maybe it's once every two weeks. I don't know. Maybe you can go to a restaurant. I guess we can't do that right now. But uh, hey, in the future, you know, go to a restaurant. It could be once every week or once every, it could even be once a month that you can get together with somebody. And maybe you can actually sit together when you come to church. Maybe you can send a text message to them, uh, you know, some kind of encouragement. Uh, you could send a card in the mail. You could send them an email. You can be a listening ear in times of trouble. You might even want to read a book together. I don't know. Are you, you might even be crazy enough to go on vacation together. I don't know if you want to do that. But hey, you know, we need each other. And if you're a new believer, okay, maybe you think you're, you're just a new Christian. Well, I'm sure that there are all kinds of people out there that you know personally who need Jesus in their life. And so you can begin to connect with them. You could serve them and you can just be watching for a God orchestrated moment where you could engage in a spiritual a discussion. I mean, that would be really cool, wouldn't it? So who will you choose to teach? Who will you choose to mentor? And I think it's a very serious question that we need to answer. We can't just depend on a few. We need all hands on deck here. We need everybody working together to make disciples, to baptize them, and teach them. Let's bow our heads, and we're going to pray, and uh, we're going to conclude this out today. Dear Heavenly Father, it's, it's my prayer that you would just help all of us to be about this life on mission I know that it's your desire that, that we would actually grow, that we would learn more about you as we live our lives. And God, that we would help other people to learn more and grow in their faith as well. Lord, I pray that if there's any decisions out there that need to be made, that you would make them, that you would help people to make them. And God, I, I do want to pray about just even now, man, what a time to live out life on mission. And this is a time where we can serve people, and I pray that you would help us to do that. There are people out there that need our encouragement. There are people out there that need words of hope, and I pray that you could use us to do that. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, I know that, that we are not meeting together in a physical building, you know, off Highway 47, in, in Warrenton, Missouri today. But uh, we can still make a decision. Now, maybe we need to make a decision uh, to get more engaged in, in just reading the Bible. And don't make it a hard thing. You know, I, I always tell people, hey, just read, read one chapter, and that's it. Uh, don't, don't make this tough and hard. And the next day, you can read one more chapter. Maybe you need to make a decision to begin this search, okay? Uh, you've been following Jesus for, for, for a while now, and who is it that you could mentor? Who is it that you could teach? Maybe you need to find your people <laughs> because you don't have people in your life that, that, that have faith. And you, you need to find some people so that they can help you. And along with what I've already talked about, maybe you need to find your Bible. Maybe you need to get it out. And, and put it out there on your, your dining room table. Maybe you just need some prayer. Maybe you need to make a decision to follow Jesus. Listen, whatever decision, you can still make a decision. I just invite you. You can call one of our elders. Uh, you can call me. Uh, you can call the church. Uh, we got an answering machine here. You can leave a message. And hey, I, I can call you back. But whatever decision you need to make, I hope you'll feel free to do that. I want to close with this verse from Psalm 56, verse 3. It says, when I am afraid, I put my trust in you. And I hope you'll be doing that during these times. I know that next week, as I've said a couple of times, but next week I'm going to be sharing a special message about winds and waves of fear. And we're going to be looking about a moment in the Bible where 
uh, the disciples found themselves in a boat with Jesus with a big storm. And we're going to learn a few observations, and I want to invite you back uh, next week to listen to that. Okay, I wish you all a great week. Be safe. Be healthy. If you need any kind of assistance, reach out, okay? Thank you very much, and just have a wonderful day.